COVID-19 Pregnancy and Fertility, latest updates in 2022. Hi friends, welcome back. I am Dr. Natalie Crawford. I am a board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinology and infertility specialist. And I wanna update you on the latest about COVID, COVID vaccines and infections and what you need to know. We are in the midst of a, another surge. This is the Omicron surge, which is highly virulent, very transmissible. And this is making a lot of people nervous. And I think it's a really great time for us just to think about the data because we are still continuing to see a huge discrepancy in vaccination status in pregnant people and the rest of the United States. And this is causing adverse outcomes that I need I need you to know about if you are trying to get pregnant or pregnant. And so I just wanna break down the science and the facts. I am not here to judge you. I'm here to provide education so you can make the best decisions. Overall, this channel talks about fertility, health, your body, and if you want to learn more, subscribe to follow along so that we can help spread this message. I want to start by just saying in the United States, according to the latest CDC data, approximately 78% of people in the United States who are eligible for a vaccination are vaccinated with at least one dose. That's fantastic. Of pregnant people, only 39% of current pregnant people have been vaccinated with at least one dose of the vaccine. That number is hugely different. When evaluating why, reasons include fear of harm of the pregnancy or fear of future fertility. Those are the two things that are keeping the group of people who are becoming pregnant away from getting the vaccine. And so in a quick form today, I want to try to break down what this is. I have a lot of other videos on COVID. I have a whole playlist on it. And so some studies I talk about in more detail there. I just want to hit on the high points today so that if you are on the fence or if you have a loved one who is unsure about getting vaccinated because of harm to a pregnancy or their fertility, I'm here to provide facts saying that the vaccine does not do that. A COVID infection is a much more serious complication than getting a vaccine. So let's start at the beginning. Published in JAMA over the summer, so in August of 2021, was a nice study looking at pregnancy complications in people who had a COVID-19 infection versus those who did not. This did not look at vaccination status in any form or fashion, but it did confirm other earlier smaller studies reports showing that number one, getting COVID in pregnancy has some complications. You have a higher risk of maternal ICU admission and death, and there is a higher risk of preterm birth at every gestational age. And that is not something to be taking lightly. You should carry a pregnancy to at least 37 weeks so that the baby can have full lung development, full neurological outcomes. When you deliver before that time, your baby often has to stay in the NICU and can have serious complications later in life. There are many ways to prevent a COVID infection. You can try to socially distance, avoid going in public, wear your mask, wash your hands. Those are all really great things, but getting a vaccine is the number one top thing that you can do to prevent yourself from getting a severe COVID infection. The New England Journal of Medicine published a study looking at everybody who received the COVID vaccine while they were pregnant. So not even before pregnancy, but while they were pregnant. And what that showed us is that there was no higher rate of any complication from those who got the vaccine versus those who didn't. So this theory or hypothesis that the vaccine would cause placental issues, implantation failure, miscarriage, stillbirth, preterm birth, growth restriction, not founded. So that was not seen in very large study numbers. Broken down by miscarriage, which is one of the things that the misinformation experts out there are attacking your fear with, telling you that you're going to miscarry if you get the vaccine. So broken down by miscarriage, we are seeing normal rates of miscarriage as we see in the normal population. Approximately 20, 25% of all pregnancies will miscarry with that number getting extremely higher as you get older. When we look at the COVID data for those who got vaccinated, those who've been reported vaccination, we look at their miscarriage rates, it's not different than any historical miscarriage data. This graph is a really great one looking at different studies that have reported miscarriage rates at different gestational ages. And this is showing us that the V-safe data 
which is yellow, tracks other pregnancy-related population-based data, especially our most current data, which is in the orange line. So the VSAFE is yellow, the most current pregnancy cohort data is in the orange. You do not have a higher chance of miscarriage or stillbirth if you get a vaccination. You do have a higher chance of having a stillbirth or a bad pregnancy complication if you get an infection. To follow this up, we have a good study that was published in the American Journal of OBGYN or the Gray Journal in November of 21, looking at people who got vaccinated in pregnancy and comparing those who got the vaccine and those who did not. The study is pregnancy and birth outcomes after SARS-CoV-2 vaccination in pregnancy. In this study, there were over 2,000 pregnant patients who were evaluated. Of these, only 140 received a vaccine during pregnancy, so 7%. So a low vaccination rate in pregnancy and 10% of all the patients had a COVID infection. People who were vaccinated were much less likely to one, get infected with COVID. And those who had the vaccine did not have any higher chance of pregnancy complications from the placenta not working. So the vaccine alone did not cause any complications with stillbirth, preterm birth, or other adverse outcome. And in fact, the only stillbirths in the study were in the group who did not get vaccinated. Another study looking at getting vaccinated and seeing if the vaccine alone had any adverse outcomes to the placental functioning was out of Israel, looked at over 4,000 patients, published in Vaccine. It's titled Prenatal Maternal COVID-19 Vaccination and Pregnancy Outcomes. In the study, there were over 4,000 pregnant people who were in the study and about 20% of them got vaccinated during the study. No differences in polyhydramnios, oligohydramnios, growth restriction, preterm birth, delivery mechanism, or complications. So getting the vaccine in pregnancy is not showing any safety concerns or pregnancy complications. But what if you get COVID and you've had the vaccine? That's the question I keep getting asked and published in the Green Journal, or the big journal for OBGYN, is this article, Maternal Outcomes After Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, Infection in Vaccinated Compared with Unvaccinated Pregnant Patients. So this is a retrospective cohort study where they look backwards to see if people were vaccinated or not and followed their outcomes. This was followed between June 15th to August 20th. Over 10,000 pregnant patients were included in the study, so that's a really huge number, but only 13% of them were vaccinated. That's representative of these really low vaccine rates that we are seeing. This table right here is, I think, the most important part of this. So in this chart, we are looking at the primary outcome being a severe or critical COVID-19 infection, comparing the vaccinated to unvaccinated. There was only one patient who was sick in the vaccinated group and 58 who were sick in the unvaccinated group. And the only stillbirths, maternal deaths, ICU admissions, all occurred in the unvaccinated population. So this study helps us understand that even in a highly transmissible variant like we have right now, getting the vaccine is beneficial because it's protecting you still from those outcomes. So if you get vaccinated, you are more likely to have a more mild case and therefore your chance of bringing a baby home from the hospital is going to be much greater than if you are unvaccinated. So this is still supporting that the number one thing you can do to keep yourself and your baby healthy is get vaccinated, whether you're trying to conceive or currently pregnant. This is supported by all major medical organizations. So the CDC recommends this, but so does the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, the American College of OBGYN, the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine. So your fertility experts, your OBGYN experts, your high-risk pregnancy experts, we are all recommending universally the vaccine in anybody who is trying to get pregnant, undergoing fertility treatments, or actively pregnant right now. If your doctor is not recommending this, you seriously need to consider a new doctor. And I know that sounds harsh, but they are not following the most up-to-date. They are not following scientific recommendations from your organizations. They are not practicing evidence-based medicine, and you deserve better than that. I'm going to do a follow-up video next week is going to be on the latest research on fertility. So subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that one. That's the number one cited reason for why people are not getting vaccinated is harm to future fertility. As a fertility doctor who's been talking about COVID for years now, that one gets me because you can at least have the data that I have to feel comfortable getting yourself vaccinated and not worrying about your future fertility. I am Dr. Natalie Crawford always appreciate your support. We would love it if you'd subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram or TikTok at Natalie Crawford MD or listen to the As a Woman podcast for more in-depth fertility-related information. Thanks, friends.